Hi everybody. I quickly wanted to discuss with you this, as they call it in clinical psychology condition, ADHD. We have become familiar with this term, with the symptoms as people being highly energetic, forgetting things because they skip from topic to topic very, very, very quick, among others. And, but it seems that there is a whole wide area that is gray, meaning in my idea there are three groups, people who do not have ADHD, people who are in the gray area, slightly having ADHD, and those people who have all the symptoms or many of the symptoms, clinical psychology is saying this belongs to ADHD, meaning that they can diagnose somebody with this condition. I think that many Many people, unbelievable, huge amount of people falling in this gray area. Not really having it, but slightly do. And I think that there is a reason for that. So I briefly wanted to discuss with you this condition ADHD, but from a complete different approach. So, as I just mentioned, I think there are three groups of people. People who do not have the symptoms of ADHD, people who are walking the gray area, and those who are falling in the range, according to clinical psychology, they are uh, living with this condition. I wanted to talk about this gray area. Let's go back all the way to the moment that our species was still in this primordial state. And that we are living in an area full with dinosaurs and mammoth and huge spiders. Yes, you know, I have a terrible fear for spiders, especially when they are huge. Um, all kinds of uh, mag, I believe it's a magnodon, maglodon, that huge shark. So, that period of time in evolution. Three groups. We have people or Neanderthals uh, that do not have these, this condition of being hyper energetic, being, well, according to many psychologists uh, uh, impulsive so these people not having this see a mam mammoth in the distance and go like yes that's food i'm going to kill it and drag it to my cave so they run up to it and well you scare the game or the game is attacking you either way it's not a good end result now you have the people in the third group. Those people have ADHD. They go like immensely fast. Um, but in the moment that they get there, they, they see all kinds of stuff. Um, there, there is a, an, another animal, or there is another Neanderthal, or there is a, oh, a pretty flower. So before they can reach this mammoth, they have forgotten why they were running in the first place. So, either way, this mammoth is going to be uh, running away because it doesn't want to be killed or it is attacking. So, again, not a good end result. It seems that group 1 and group 3 do not have this, well, planning memory or planning capability they go or like boom towards the mammoth or they are being distracted by anything that well crosses their path 
Now this gray area. That's my dog you are here. <laughs> Jelly, pass off. Good girl. Um, so this, these people in the gray area, they have this this impulsive urge or, or behavior to kill this mammoth. But they also have this part of, um, well, sorry to say, so I don't like the term, but severe ADHD. So they have this huge amount of energy. But because they can combine these two things, they have this capability of planning. I am going to plan how I am going to use this amount of energy. Jelly play. This, this, this feeling of instant kill. So they combine these two things. And by meaning of that, it almost seems as if they can look in front, as if they can see what they are about to do. Probably also because they have watched group one and group three doing really stupid stuff and that the end results are not really what they want. So they have learned from both parties. Now, when you say, I'm looking in front, this almost sounds like these realms of the unexplained, cognitive, uh, precognitive information, um, seeing into the future, um, and, and that kind of things. So I think, to wrap it all up, I think that this gray area was the original way of thinking of the human species because that's the best way to survive you can uh, kill and you make can make an instant kill you have a high energy plus you can schedule you can plan in front so these three things is the best way to survive like again i think that this is the way the original way of people thinking we have we were born with this capability after centuries, after millions and millions of years of evolution. This capability of looking in front, looking far in time, is what we should do, according to me. Because we will survive anything, if you can do so. Now, how do they establish this precognitive information? Or better said, how can they bring this under control? How can people like, sh uh, like a shaman, or um, as they call it in Europe, a, a witch doctor, among others, uh, how do they control this precognitive information? How can they control this viewing in the future, or perhaps even in the past. I gave it a thought, and viewing the human brain, there are a couple of things that draw my attention, and that is one, the corpus callosum, that is two, the pineal gland, and three, the claustrum. So, the corpus callosum is on top, and the pineal gland is, well, almost just behind the midbrain and the claustrum are two thin very very thin sheets on both sides uh, just just in the area of the midbrain the corpus callosum um no let, let me start off with the pineal gland the pineal gland um is uh creating uh, chemicals for for us to dream and it wakes up so to say when it's dark and it goes to sleep so to say when there is daylight the claustrum these thin sheets are the 
that that one little thing that is creating a much much energy when you have ADHD most likely I'm not entirely sure but most likely these thin sheets are creating a little bit too much energy for your pineal gland to make an imbalanced chemical reaction in the midbrain and in the moment that um, you can control the claustrum, the energy flow, you can control the chemical reactions, the chemical mixtures in the midbrain and thus the holographic projections which are similar to when we are dreaming. Those surrealistic objects and strange moments in odd environments or remote viewing, we can say. Um, if, you, if you can control this, you can control the precognitive information <clears throat> and thus you can look into the future, meaning you can tap into any vibration, any frequency you want. So when you are in Neanderthal and you are thinking and living and viewing the world in this gray area that you can plan, that you can kill very fast, but with a form of control. It could be, it just could be that these people survive because, not only because they can plan their kill, but they can tap into the mind of their kill, their game, this mammoth, to see in front what it's going to do. Is it going to run? Is it going to attack? Is it going to stand still? Is it going to flee? Is it going to fight? Or is it going to freeze? When you have ADHD, in as sci clinical psychology calls it, severe case, if you can control this, you can control your life. You can control the symptoms. You can understand your behavior and remember what you were doing or what you are about to do. So now, how about this corpus callosum? Well, that was more an idea that followed, that popped up in my mind because I was thinking about precognitive information, how people can tap into the ghostly realms, the unseen and unexplained realms. The corpus callosum is capable of releasing, of creating well, a kind of a sugary substance. It's not really sugar, but it's kind of it. Now, when a paranormal investigator, for instance, or when anybody steps into a dark room, you suddenly have this creepy feeling that energy is crawling up to your knees, this fight and flee uh, stadium. So when too much energy is being created by the claustrum and thus is waking up the pineal gland and thus is creating a huge amount of images, holographic projections in the midbrain. When this energy is reaching the corpus callosum and thus the sugary substance, it is burning in a way. So by burning this substance, it could be that Inside, inside yourself, inside your head, you are smelling sulfur or rotten eggs and thus immediately think by means of the medieval teachings that we are dealing with a demonic force. And that was the reason why I was also addressing the corpus callosum. And with this idea, um, I instantly asked myself the question, are we really dealing with demonic forces all the time when we smell sulfur or rotten eggs? Or are these demonic forces in those moments, in that line of thought, only in our mind? Anyway, this was my idea, my, my thought, my theory about this 
white gray area of people having yes or just no the symptoms of ADHD. Are they truly falling into this idea of having this condition or do they not? I think again that this is the original way people should think by origin. Thank you all for listening and drop your thoughts and ideas in the comments below. But please keep in mind this is just an idea, a theory that just popped up in my mind. So I could be absolutely wrong about this matter.